good to stand there on a cold day. It's not too bad when you yeah. when you grow up in Minnesota. <laughs> I guess I grew up just down in Dorchester, so I'm used to it too, Me I too. guess. I'm I'm Todd. And you are? My name's Jamie. Jamie. Jamie so, Lenning. I graduated yeah. down the street in fourteen. Okay. So, you from around here? Or? I live in the area. Yeah. I live over by Spring Valley. Oh, okay. It's a million dollar bill. Don't nice. try and spend it all in once. <laughs> so what do you what do you think? Am I saying? Law enforcement lives matter. So are you like? I see that you have that listed as a verse. Is that like? Yep. It's Romans 13, verses 1 through 5, and then Acts chapter 10, 1 through 48. You familiar with the Bible at all, Jamie? I. I was confirmed at Waterloo Ridge Church out on the hill, but it was like our pastor, he just recently died, and it was uh, back in high school, but he was on dialysis three days a week, so we just met. Is that like, Lutheran, by the way? Yeah, Lutheran. Okay. He, he, he met with us once a month for like, I think it was like 10 or 12 weeks or something. And that was for confirmation? That was like a confirmation, so it's real brief. I mean, I I have looked at parts of the Bible, but not never have like really dedicated time to reading in general. I, I really struggled in school with reading. I've always been like physical. You're a hands-on, on, like a mechanic? Mm-hmm, mechanic and Carp farmer. Do carpentry or anything? Carpentry like and welding mm -hmm. and build stuff. And, yeah. Better than I am. I don't do things like I don't. I'm not good with mechanical See, stuff. And everybody's different. It just depends on what. I mean, what, what you're set out or want to do. I mean, Absolutely. But I think I just when I saw that, I guess the first thing I guess that came to mind was like the black people getting shot by white cops or whatever. That whole. whole yeah, deal. I mean, it's but, a. I mean, I don't know if that's more like for drama's sake or news. I, I would, I would tell you that statistics aren't all that matter because you can look up statistics and make statistics mean whatever you want them to mean yeah. to some degree. Mm -hmm. But um, I know that statistics recently showed that well, I think it was 2016 was the the last. No, excuse me, 2015. I think it was was the last year that statistics were available for because they're still doing research on others and I think that that showed that the numbers of white individuals that are shot by law enforcement are far higher now of course that's because by and large whites you know white people white you know European descent uh, are are larger in numbers than African Americans or Hispanics, um, most of the people that are shot by law enforcement or killed are killed actively fighting with or trying to hurt law enforcement. That doesn't mean there aren't bad cops, and that's what Romans right. 13 1 through 5 says is that. Here, I'll do, I'll go one better instead of just trying I'll to hold your side. Oh, will you? <laughs> I'll hold your side while you talk. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks. Um, see if I can find it on my phone here. I don't have service in this area. Yeah, so. I don't either. I got one of them U.S. cellular Walmart phones, and it's not doesn't catch a signal here. Oh, here we go. I appreciate you doing that. No. <laughs> so Romans one through thirteen one through five says, "Let every person be subject to the governing authorities." For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists, the, resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will, re will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is a servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. So what the scripture is telling us there is that, not that every... Here, I'll hold it. So you keep your hands in your pocket. Thanks. 
not that every single law enforcement officer is a Christian, but that God uses all people in positions of authority, whether we like them or not, for guidance. To, for guidance to, especially in the case of law enforcement, where it says it does not bear the sword in vain. Obviously, we don't carry swords anymore. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be cool if we did. Yeah. But, um, but does not bear the sword in vain means that even though they may not be a believer, they may not be a genuine Christian, that officer is serving God's purpose by helping to stop evil in the world. So that means even an unbeliever, God tells them that they should be watching their conduct and living in such a way so as to not become violators of, of, law, of the law so that they don't have to be in fear of law enforcement. So See, I feel like Romans 13, 1 through 5, I need to remember that because I, I can really relate to that a lot. What do you mean, Jim? By that statement. Huh? What do you mean? It's, what do I mean? Yeah. I'm 22 years old. Mm-hmm. I graduated from here in town in 2014. I went one week out of high school. I was in WWTC over in La Crosse. What's WWTC? In, huh? What's WWTC? Western Technical Community okay. College downtown okay. La Crosse. And I was doing a nine month wood tech program. Six months. I made her six months and I went broke. But I partied hard and I drank all kinds of beers mm-hmm. and got introduced to some like real minor like gateway drugs. Mm-hmm. And I've been arrested two times in my life for marijuana. Okay. And I've gone to treatments and therapies, met with individual counselors and in group type settings. And when it talks in the Romans there about your, you know, then you do, you should do good and so you don't, don't to be need afraid. to be afraid. Yeah. I'm not afraid and I wasn't going to run. Yeah. I knew what I was doing was wrong. But it, so instead of blaming them, you knew that you... Instead of blaming them, I shook his hand and thanked him for for right. getting, for apprehending me for my wrongdoings. And, cool. And like, I mean, I'm a confirmed Christian through a Lutheran church. I'm not, I'm not a very, not every Sunday. I'm, I work on Sundays, combine lots of corn on Sundays, <laughs> but... Especially this time of year, right? This time of year, really busy. But, uh, so I don't always make it to church every day, but I mean, I feel like I can, I really relate to that. So I mean. what, what if I, what if I, at, at, or not asked you, but told you this, going to church. Now, I believe the scriptures are really clear. If you go to Hebrews, the book of Hebrews in the Bible, mm-hmm. it says that we're not to forsake or not to, not to refuse or to turn our backs on going to church because God has appointed or given us church for um, our good so that we can be taught by teachers. But going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than you. Stay, like You like mechanics, right? Yeah. If you spend all of your day in a garage working on cars, do you are you a car? No. Right. And if I go and stand in a garage all day long, I'm not going to become a mechanic either. Right, you you have to be a mechanic to be a mechanic, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like you and I kind of relate because I had, I'll tell you this, but it was more when I, my mindset was in a negative, as negative mm-hmm. path in my life. But I used to say, going to church doesn't make you a good person, nor does smoking weed make you a bad person. Okay, that's what I. That's so, what that my mindset is not that now. I I do I totally. I, I understand that maybe some people can benefit or maybe health wise can can uh, better themselves I'm gonna, with that. I'm gonna stand on this side of you. But to, so I can turn this way a little bit so I can but not that I'm not listening, no, but I want people to see but, my sign. But I mean I know some states legalize it. I know that this state and the state that I live in do not and therefore law enforcement lives matter. Their job is to like apprehend Criminals. Criminals. Right. And I was a criminal. And protect us from other, you know, not not just to apprehend criminals, but to protect law-abiding, decent citizens from those who don't abide by the law. 
And just like I can say, I can make this statement that I don't pray every day, but I have tried. And I have tried to explain explain my issues or my problems in life through Christ in a prayer. And I guess all I, the statement I have to say is I took from it what I put into it. I made of it what it what I put into it. You said something a few minutes ago, if you don't mind me asking. You said um, going to church doesn't make you a good person. You said and smoking pot doesn't make you a bad person. I would agree with you that going to church doesn't make person. doesn't make us good and smoking pot doesn't make us bad. But my question, Jamie, right? Yep. I yeah. thought I thought I was reading your name right. I'm old, I don't always remember <laughs> names. Um, <coughs> I have a lot of bad habits smoking oh. cigarettes and doing, but see like these are ways that help me with some of other issues I've had problems with. Keeps you away from some of the other stuff you might like to do. Mm -hmm. um, so you said that about being good. Yeah. Do you think that God thinks people are good? Nobody is ever perfect. Well, no, not not perfect. I mean, Jesus was perfect, right? Yeah. Okay. But do you think God thinks that, that human beings are good? Does God look at human humanity? Like right this time and now, I would say probably no. So I mean, like like right now, like like I don't know if you noticed, but I put my cigarette butt in my pocket. Like a lot of people wouldn't do that. They would just start throw it on the ground. Throw yeah. it on the ground and like like I mean. How can God look at us as good people if we are constantly reproducing massly, like our population grows, I don't know how much every day, but big numbers, there's constantly new newborns being born. Less people are born every day than die every day, did you know that? Less people are born than die? Mm-hmm. More people well, die every day than, than are born. Well, and maybe that's God's way of saying that's what has to happen in order to make this world still spin because... <laughs> well, the world's going to spin. <laughs> well, we can't outbalance that. But no, so so you you're right. I I agree with you that God I, You probably just feel like I'm excuse me, but I just I'm very active, so when I stand new. around, I get kind I, of No, I you notice I I I rock <laughs> back and forth and I, and mostly cuz I'm if I don't, I'm going to freeze in spot. <laughs> I actually appreciate you stopping and talking to me. Um, that's so one of the, are you recording on that thing? I record everything, <laughs> yeah, so. I want to do that for my dog. I want to get same thing like that, but put it on my dog some way. Not me, my dog, because <laughs> I want my dog. You want to know what your dog does? She could be from here to Caledonia in 10 minutes. She can just <laughs> run go. and go, and she will not look back. She will run so far. She, yeah, she's, she's active. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of energy. So I really liked what you said about God looking down on us and not and not thinking that we're good and and you're right and here's why so if you go back to Genesis you know this you know this the story about the flood Noah's mm -hmm. Ark right before God decided to flood the earth he's it's the scripture say in Genesis chapter 6 that God looked down on the on man and saw that man was only evil all the time and that's all the way back at the beginning of the Bible Genesis 6 I mean we're talking not very long. I don't know the exact time frame from Genesis 1 to Genesis 6, but not very long. And and God already at that point after Adam and Eve fell, God had already saw or already saw that man was his full of evil, his heart was full of evil. And that's not just one man, that's all men. Know them or are they just Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh I dated a girl that babysat her kids from oh. this town. So that that is true for everybody today. Not just back then, but today. And this is this is the hard part for all of us, Jamie, is that God says that all of men, even you, and when I say men, I mean all of humanity, men and women, all of mankind in God's eyes, apart from Jesus Christ, God looks at them and sees them as evil. Mm -hmm. Now, why are we evil? What makes us evil? So you took confirmation, right? Yeah. So if I asked you what God's laws are, would you know what they are? <laughs> it's, You're really quizzing me. Cause no, might... no. It, it's, and I ask this because it kind of ties into what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So it's not meant to be a quiz, but I think you would know it. So if I asked you about the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. you would know at least and a few of them. 
steal or right commit. thou shall not murder mm -hmm. thou shall not com commit adultery mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. thou shall not covet you know remember the sabbath to keep it holy don't use the lord's name as a curse word blasphemy but see one thing like like i could say is that like i have <clears throat> Like a lot of people in my life that try to guide me and help me, family, mm -hmm. friends. And over time, I've got a lot of books like that relate to Bible. Like there's one, I can't think of the name of it, but it's like a real bright highlighter orange cover on it. Okay. And it's like a, te a book for like teenagers. And it's like a life book. Mm -hmm. Basically, when you have like an event happening or going on, you just like, like anger. And you like, look up anger. Anger. And then it'll give you a reference page, and then you go to that page, and then it'll give you like Bible verses and, and stuff like that. But one thing, like for me, I feel like I haven't connected so much with the Bible is, is like this book is a lot out of my time, so it's hard for me to sometimes comprehend. Yep. Like, like, like reading materials. No, absolutely. And that's so that's why like sometimes it's hard for me to not fall asleep when I do go to church because it, <laughs> it's comfy and warm in there. Right, and, and everybody likes to be comfortable and warm. And when he's like saying his sermon and it's like not in my level, it's hard yep. for me to follow. You know what I'm saying? What? We, have, we have a really old congregation and like where I feel like if I wanted like to have Christ be, be a bigger role in my life now, like I feel like I should be like out in the free church or something uh, oh like, yeah the e free church out like, here i have a lot of know a lot of like i graduated with a kid that goes there and, and some other friends and stuff and, uh, well maybe maybe you should get a hold of them and see if they'd be do you drive at all well i do drive but with my drugs history right now i'm in a uh, temporary workers license so okay. I get, so it's I get only to and from to work, work. Yeah. and like I could come up here if I needed to buy parts mm -hmm. like right there as long as I was like for my for my boss maybe but you I should get my see license if... back in like like 30 days cool maybe you should check in with somebody and see if they'd be willing to take you out there because I've talked to the pastor out at that church I mean like I think they like play music and shit and like I've really been like trying to listen to songs and trying to like make music a part of my life because I've been the I'm the type of guy who has like always dream had big dreams but fallen really hard. Like yeah. like just by by my actions and choices and just how sometimes life curves. Would it get would it be would it be safe to say that you've made sinful decisions that have caused very, you to have problems? Very, very sinful decisions. Do all you through know a teenager, all through high school and even now early adulthood I have made very sinful choices. Do you know and and I and I ask this, you know, believe it or not, I love my fellow humans, humanity, mm -hmm. which is one of there again one of the reasons why I do this. But do you know what God did so that because of your because of your sin, do you know what God did? He hung so, there fucking bleeding and shit. On a cross, me. right? For me. For people like me who fuck up and 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 allow the devil and negative friends get inside of me and mess with my life. Do you? But not. Let's you know. And and I understand bad influences. You know, this the, the scriptures is hard for me. Scriptures, and I'm going to paraphrase. The scriptures say that bad company corrupts good morality. Um in different ways that you have to be careful who you hang out with mm -hmm. because it can corrupt you but more importantly see that's take, why that's a really bad habit because it's it's nasty it's nasty and i can't stand to swallow every part of it and i don't blame you <laughs> but i've I never chewed or never smoked but i do not want to i do not spit it like right where a person would swallow. think think about this even without bad influences like bad friends you still needed a savior right mm -hmm. Because in God's eyes, just like me, Jamie, you have broken every one of God's laws. I want you to think about that. In James, it's in the book of James, which is one of the epistles, the letters in the New Testament, it says if you break even one of God's laws, you have broken them all. That's why, like, you might think this is, like, I don't know really how I can phrase it to make sense for you, but, like, maybe 
racist in a church setting type way, but sometimes I feel like I shouldn't be Lutheran, I should be Catholic, but then I felt like I would get kicked out for all my sins that the pastor would run out of time when you have to confess your sins. He would have, the whole confession would be for my here's, sins. Here's why you don't need to be Catholic. Um, there again in the book of Hebrews, it said that God, I'm probably getting it wrong because I'm tired and I'm cold. The Bible tells us that there's only there's only one mediator, and that means a person who goes between God and man, and that person is Christ. So, the Catholic Church in this situation that you brought up would would require you to go to a priest and confess to a priest all of your sins, and then that priest tells you what you need to do to be forgiven. And what God holy t- shit, he would do that. That's what that's what the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church teaches. But what the Bible teaches is that you need Christ. You need Jesus. Just like I need Jesus. So so how do you need it? By you, His Word? You By need, reading it? Well, you... Okay, so you've said, Jamie, right, that you have a hard time with reading mm-hmm. and, and understanding what you read, right? Mm-hmm. Is that a fair... Yeah. Okay. Like I could rather, would rather, like... Listen. Listen or something. Right. So, so now I want you to think back several, you know, 1,500 years ago. There was a time where you, right now, with the level of education that you have, would have been, people would have seen you as, as like, a literary genius. (laughs) And I I don't mean that to pick on you. I mean that, honestly, because you could still read and write better Mm -hmm. than anybody 1,500 years ago. Mm -hmm. Not anybody, but the vast majority of people. And even 500 years ago, you would have still been able to read and write better than the vast majority of people. Mm 200 years ago, you could still read and write better than them. So you're measuring your intelligence based on what you see today. Now, granted, are we able to read and write more today? Most people can, right? Mm -hmm. There are very few functionally illiterate people in the world today. So even if you struggle with understanding, Jamie, my new friend, Mm -hmm. even even if you struggle with understanding, there are people who can teach you. And so like you mentioned the E Free Church out here. I know the I don't know him, but I've talked to him once or twice on the phone uh, for quite a while on one occasion, and I know that he would be able to teach you what you need to know, and then help you understand the Bible. And that's why you don't need no. That pastor is not can't forgive your sins. Mm-hmm. Only Jesus Christ can forgive your sins. And well, I need to learn how to what I have to do to do that. But and, and so what you have to do to be forgiven. So here's, you can't do anything. I know, I can't you change can't, my past. You can't, no, not What's even your past. You can't even change your nature. You can't earn God's happy pleasure. You can't earn God's forgiveness. Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 1 and going through verse 10, says, It is by grace that you are saved through faith and not of works, because if it's works, you can boast. And you think about that. You can't earn God's salvation because apart from Jesus Christ just like me Jamie just like every other human being alive you're a rotten person now I know that sounds horribly mean it's very but, true. but it's true you and I are rotten horrible people but we and we need Christ and the reason we need Christ is because we've we don't we don't do anything right mm-hmm. all of our righteous works all of those good things that we think we're doing So I'm going to use an example you gave, like not throwing your cigarettes on the ground, not littering. Mm -hmm. Bible doesn't talk about not littering, but it says obey God's, obey man's laws because God has given us man, other men to rule, to write laws for our good and our benefit. So when you disobey God by disobeying man, you deserve God's judgment, not just man's judgment. You deserve God's judgment. Now, of course, if a man writes a law that tells you to violate God's law, that doesn't apply because God's law trumps man's law. But all these good things you do by maintaining man's laws aren't going to earn you any points with God, right? So people might be really like, wow, I really respect Jamie because he doesn't break the law anymore, right? It's not but, at that point, but but God I'm hoping to get but, when there but God looks at would look at that and go, okay, so so let's let's use this in, in human terms. What if you were accused of murder and they had had it on video that you killed a person, right? Mm-hmm. You accuse 
and they, and they come up and they say, hey, Jamie, hate to tell you this, but we've got you killing this person. We caught you literally red-handed killing this person, murdering this person for no reason. You were just mad and you murdered him. And the judge, the judge is about to pass sentence on you and you say to the judge, your honor, overall I'm a pretty decent person. I keep all the other laws. All, I've, all I ever did now in the last kill. is kill this guy. The judge would not be a good judge if he said, you know, Jamie, you make a good point. It's only one murder. You keep all the other laws. What, what would you say about a judge who would let you go? You'd be thankful. <laughs> I'd be thankful, but, I'd but you know he's, he's wrong. Not faithful. He he's wrong. He's not a good judge, is he? Right? So That's God right. is going to look at all this other law keeping that you do. Even if you quit lying and quit stealing, and I'm not saying you've ever mm -hmm. stolen, I would say we've all stolen at some point in our lives. I've stolen drugs from friends in bad, in bad times in my life. And so all of those other things that we do, mm -hmm. that we think are good because we're not doing them anymore, God said that doesn't matter because once you break one of my laws, you've broken all of them. And that means you deserve God's justice. And we don't want God's justice because God's justice means that God's wrath is poured out on us. And He pours out His wrath on us because we deserve it for being lawbreakers, for not keeping His law. And the greatest of God's laws, the greatest of God's commandments, is to love God with every fiber of our being. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I wake up every morning failing to love God the way I'm supposed to love Him. And I think if you were going to be honest, you would have to say the same thing, right? You don't love God perfectly every day. No, but I right? think I, I think I love Him in my own way. Like, like I'm a very, like outdoors, outdoorsy and like, like nature guy. Like, like I wish I could help. I wish I would have been, like, when he was like making trees and pretty flowers. And I wish I was there. You appreciate it. I really you appreciate do. the beauty of his creation. Because there's no, there is, there is no drug, alcohol, or feeling in the world that would make me feel the way I do when I go out in the morning, in the dead, in the dead, of, in the dead of dark. But you appreciate and, God's beauty, is mm -hmm. what you're saying. Animals, right? Because God created animals and they're beautiful. But I also believe in sacrifice too, because. You're hungry, and you have probably your family. God gave and you us. Have to eat. God gave us animals to eat, and man is to take care of those. And some some people can't make a sacrifice to kill, so but we don't, somebody has to do that. So we wouldn't call that a sacrifice, but we'd call that properly using God's creation to take care of ourselves the way He intended. So, so what I'm what I'm po pointing at Jamie is not that I think that what you do isn't good in man's eyes it is but god says love me the way i've commanded and that means to love him above everything else and none of us do jamie mm -hmm. none of us do that's the greatest commandment all of the other commandments m come down to that love god above everything else and then love other people more than you love yourself and the problem is is we can't mm -hmm. we can't do that and that's why we need a savior jamie that's why jesus christ had to go to the cross but the most important part of it jamie honestly is is that it wasn't just that he went to the cross it was that he lived the life we couldn't live and i want to think about that when christ came he's the second person in the trinity eternally the son always god god the father god the son god the holy spirit god the son came in the flesh lived with every temptation that you and i have ever lived with but never sinned i mean think about that Every you and I can't hard. go you and I can't go an hour without thinking something sinful, let alone doing something sinful, right? Mm -hmm. So here's Jesus living every minute, every second, every every split second of his Very life. Completely perfect, never breaking any of the laws of God, obeying his mother and earthly father. And then think about that. Jesus created Joseph and Mary, and yet he obeyed them. And at the end of his life, having lived perfectly, having done everything we cannot do, having resisted every temptation that you and I could never resist, sooner or later, if I'm tempted to do something enough, I tell my wife, or I told my wife that as much as I love her, if, you, if I'm tempted, if I'm tempted enough, sooner or later, some woman will probably be able to seduce me. Mm -hmm. You're right. 
it doesn't matter how much I love my wife, sooner or later, I'm going to succumb to temptation. But I think God made it that way because humans are beautiful creatures. And I think God did create them. beautiful women. I'm not going to argue with you on that. But we're still supposed to be faithful. Jesus Very never faithful. caved into any of that temptation, Jamie, ever. Think about that. Never. And at the end of his life, he went to the cross, not for any crime that he committed, not for any sin that he committed, but for yours. For what I and when he's on the cross, think about this. He didn't just suffer physical pain. The scriptures teach us in the book of Isaiah, which is in the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah, tells us that it pleased the Father to crush the Son. You work on a farm, right? Mm -hmm. You've seen grain getting ground in a grinder. Mm -hmm. You know what a All grain a grain grinder looks like? Mix so, your feed mill. That's right? Like so you go to that feed mill and you look at that grain being ground up. That's what the picture is when, G, when it says that it pleased God to crush him. It's like God took a grinder and put Jesus in the grinder of his wrath. The grinder in this case is God's wrath, and He crushed the life out of His own Son. Not because He hated His Son, but because He hates sin. And then in Psalm 5, it says that God hates sinners too. But because He loved humanity still, in this, while we were still sinners, God died. Christ died for us. He crushed the life out of Christ on the cross, so that if you repent and believe, and repent means to agree with God about who you really are, that you don't deserve His you don't deserve His grace, that you don't deserve His mercy, and you turn away from your sin and turn to Christ for life. That's the gospel, mm -hmm. and that's why He's given us law enforcement, is to remind us of our need to be made right. And I know that sounds funny, but that's exactly what the gospel is. You have a all lives matter. That's why law enforcement lives matter, bud. I said, I said all lives matter. I know, but that's why law enforcement lives matter. Yeah, everyone's life matters. Right. But our lives matter, and that's why we need police. That, that's right. That's uh, why we need military, too. I agree 100%. I'm a veteran. <laughs> Does that make sense, what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, think about that. Have you heard it put that way before, what I just said? It's kind of, does it seem kind of new to you, what I'm saying? A little bit. So what I would encourage you to do, Jamie, is read that. Do you have a DVD player? I actually not equipped you with that right now, but I'm go going to real quick. If I were to give you a DVD, do you think you'd be able to watch it? Find yeah. a place to watch it? Mm -hmm. So what, let's see here. It's 5.58. I was going to be on the road a while ago. I'm glad we ran into yeah, each other. Yeah, I'm going to go through the football game as I really do, but um, I forgot my damn wallet, so i got to find a friend that's going to help me get in the game. <laughs> if I gave, if I gave you a DVD, would you in would you yeah. would you uh, would you watch it? Yeah, I would. Okay, um, and maybe see if you could help have somebody give you a hand getting out to the E Free Church might, here. I might even run into my friend that goes there, and I might talk to him because I don't know. I just think... Are the things that I'm saying making sense to you? Yeah. But I just have one question, and yeah. I'll let you... can Because I got to go, and you got to go, but... Yeah, I'll walk up here. You can walk up here in my vehicle, and I'll give you the DVD. But he... Uh, is there anything in the Bible that talks about, like, like medicine or anything like that? Like, well, as in the sense of, like, drug or over-the-counter or... Like using abuse, drugs? Or yeah. abuse. Well, it says not to be drunk. And so if you think okay, about so it, if you, it says we're supposed to be sober. So that doesn't mean you can't ever have a beer, but you better not get drunk. Does that make sense? So, so let me just... Well, we, let's, let's yeah. go, we can talk while we're going up. So if I tell you that, that my dad is an alcoholic and my, my mom, she's addicted to pills you get from the doctor and shit, and then they try to influence and guide my life the way they they think is right it, it it's hard for me yeah to adapt to change in life oh, it, it is it's, it's hard for all of us everybody but has their own it's hard ways it's, it's just like that guy seemed to be kind of pissed that you were holding I, yeah i don't think he was i don't think he was real happy but that's his deal not yours I'm actually going to see if I can find a pencil, and I'm going to write down 
my name yeah. and my phone number and my Warming up for you. Oh yeah, it doesn't bother me too much. I'm used to it. So. <laughs> I see you had a sign on you. Yeah. How long were you there? Uh, I've been there for about an hour. Oh, gee whiz. Yeah. Uh -huh. I've been doing this for a few hours today. Good enough. Yeah, we. Stay warm. I'm doing yeah. all right. Yeah. You do I'm that, Todd. Sir. Paul Foles. Paul, I think you know my brother. Is Nate Pearson. Oh, yep. Yeah, this is can, first thing. Can I borrow a pen real quick? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and that's for you to check out. Nate told me you thought you'd be on tonight. Yep. So. Pretty much every night. It's kind you of. You do matter, sir. Appreciate it. <laughs> um. <laughs> this guy's pretty good. Size, the so. only good in me is Jesus. <laughs> so, Jamie, I'm going to give you my number. Okay. Um, I live quite a ways away. And this is my email. Give me just a second, Paul. Sure, no problem. So I know it's sloppy, but it's cold. So that's my phone number. Shoot me a text if you have any questions about what we talked about. That's my email. Shoot, you know, you can find me on Facebook with this one, or you can find me on Facebook with that one. Okay. And I appreciate your time. Think about what we said, what I said though, and I really appreciate you stopping and talking okay. with me, Paul. Right? Yeah. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Have a good day. You too. Do you need a ride somewhere or you're good? I was just going to walk to the football field. I'd be all right. All right. Thanks Thank for you. stopping. I appreciate you talking. Yeah.